You can actually pin this right on your puppet. And you know where your lines are, your, your mouth lines and everything else. And then I'll use uh, uh, usually these disappearing ink markers, these little blue blue ones, or they, these disappear with water. It's not really important whether they're disappearing ink or not. You just don't want anything that's gonna soak through onto your puppet. And then uh, I wanna draw my mustache. So say for him, we wanna draw, we wanna draw something like this. Not a full handlebar, but just something kind of fun. Um, so then what we'll do is we'll take this off and lay it down, either use scissors or, uh, um, or a, a blade. Um, yep. So like that. Now what I do is I usually will try to use the light and, uh, and hold this up to the light to line it up as best I can and then fold it. So that way I'm evening my pattern out because you know you freehand things, it's not always great. Um, the good thing is though, you'll also see how inconsistent your puppet is. If your puppet's really not centered well, then you can make that adjustment as well on your pattern. I'm gonna use a sharp uh, persona for this and I'm just gonna cut my pattern out. And we're gonna give him a little more length on that side. And again, this is a really quick, inexpensive way to pattern um, for accessories and stuff on your puppet. Now, so. Can You Fathom says uh, that they use white, thin kitchen trash bags for patterning. Have you ever done that? Oh, I haven't. Um, no, I, uh, my, my concern with that, I, and, and I'm sure it would work well, but the paper towels have a grip to them, so when you lay them on, they stay in place. Like they'll hold on. With plastic, I would be afraid of a little bit of the shifting of it sliding around on there. But still, I, you could use anything. I mean, you, if you have some old wrapping paper laying around or brown paper bags, anything would work. Um, the main reason I like the paper towels is because they're flexible and the grip. If I just lay this on here, it stays on. It's not, you know, I don't have to do anything. Um, it literally just stays where it needs to on its own by kind of locking on there. Um, and Derek uses painter's tape. Have you ever done that? Yes, I use painter's tape as well. Um, <clears throat> the only thing with painter's tape is, and, and this is just an issue a lot of people have is, um, and I as well, is budget. Painter's tape's not cheap. It's, it's expensive. I have a couple rolls today with me, and paper towels are three cents a sheet, you know, and a roll of painter's tape is anywhere from three to ten dollars, depending on the type of tape. So um, I'm, I'm thinking budget-wise on this more than anything. Um, also, if this is something I'm going to use down the line, what I'll do um, afterwards is I'll hit, put some spray adhesive on it and I'll slap it on a piece of cardstock and I'll cut my pattern out of cardstock. So then I always have the original and a more resilient pattern to keep for later on. So, so, so say we want to use this for our mustache. So we're going to take our fur. The first thing, oops, the first thing we want to do is see which direction the nap goes. And all fur is different. And one of the issues that happens when you wash and dry your fur is sometimes you lose the nap direction. So you want to go through your fur and you want to see which way the nap lies. This one's a little easier to see. It runs down this way. You know, but you don't want to cut it this way because if you cut your mustache that way, when you put it on, it's going to come up and it's going to look really funny. So you want to make sure it lays correctly. Sometimes with mustaches too, what I'll do is I'll do two pieces and I'll have the nap running to the sides especially if you want to do a, like a handlebar with a curl on the end. And then, excuse me, you would actually cut two separate pieces and then stitch them together down the center with the nap running in two different directions. We're just going to do uh, running down on this one. So we'll lay it up. We'll trace it. Um, try to use, if you're going to use Sharpies on your patterns, just remember that if you use a dark Sharpie color, it, you run the risk of it showing especially on a puppet with light skin color or light fleece or whatever. So try to use a color that's complementary to whatever color you're using. Brown or black on the back of brown or black fur is great. If I was doing white fur, I wouldn't want red or yellow or green or anything that's gonna show through. So just be conscious of that. You can also use chalk, Taylor's chalk. Um, a lot of people do that too, especially people that sew a lot will have that in their arsenal already. Um, and chalk works great because it, it brushes out completely when you're done as long as you don't set it with hairspray. 
And hey, uh, guys, thank you for the Bob Ross comments and for the makeup artist comments. I appreciate that makeup tips by BJ and, uh, and the Bob Ross thing. Uh, we'll do some happy little tree mustaches here. So we got Bob our... Ross started this whole video teaching thing. Oh, that's true. He was, he was the too, guy. He? He, he was it. He started it back in the day. <laughs> and Boxcar Willie started selling music that way. <laughs> All right. So when we're cutting fur, um, and and again, I may have covered this on some of the others, but for people who haven't seen any of the other CD or DVDs or classes, scissors do not use scissors when cutting fur. What happens when you cut fur? And I'll just cut a piece to show you. So we've got all this beautiful nap. And if we cut our pattern with scissors, we just cut all that nap, all that really beautiful length off the, the bottom. We've just cut through that. And all of this just got cut off. So we lost all that really nice nap on this fur. So when we're cutting fur, use a really sharp razor blade if you have one. And we want to kind of hold the fur tight and then just cut through the back of the fur. Don't push down all the way to the table because then, you'll, again, you'll cut through the nap. And try to do it in a smooth single cut rather than choppy ones um, so you're not jumping back and forth. And then here, too, we'll do the same thing. And then you'll kind of have to pull the nap out when you pull this piece out. But what you'll see what we have is all this nap has stayed. And we've got all this beautiful length to work with on this. So when we get into it, we can trim and style the mustache and do whatever we need to, to get a better look or a nicer look out of it. So we take our mustache and then we drape it on our guy here. I'm just going to pin this on here. Quick question. Yep. Uh, this is from Can You Fathom. Did you add any extra allowance so you could roll over the edge of the fur for the edges, or you just went right to that? You know what? Pattern? Um, I have a tendency to try to make features more permanent on a puppet. So I don't. Um, if this was off center a little, hold on. Um, so I, I don't do extra, extra seam allowance. The thing with the mustaches is I always kind of draw them a little larger anyway. And um, that way I know I have a little extra. But what I'll do is I'll stitch it down. And when I stitch, I'll use the ladder stitch that we use, the Muppet stitch, the whatever, you know, the stitch that rolls it in. And I'll stitch along this edge. So what that'll do is it'll, roll, it'll automatically roll it in and give me a really clean line along the top edge of, of uh, the mustache. And it blends really well. And then it also looks like the mustache is actually growing out of the face rather than sitting on top of it. Um, it's a matter, again, a matter of preference. Like, uh, um, it's whatever you choose to do with it. Uh, if you're just taping it on, like with top stick or whatever, then yeah, you can always roll it in. The other thing you can do is if you want to add a little seam allowance on the back, you can take hot glue, a hot glue gun. So you can do a little line of hot glue along there. And then when you roll it, don't just roll the backing. Actually roll some of the nap of the fur over. And then you get a really beautiful fur edge um, that, that brushes over. And uh, it's just a nice way to get a nice clean line. But um, to answer your question, again, I usually prefer not to put too much. The other issue, too, is, and this may be a personal thing with me, is I have a tendency to, to go too big on everything with this. So if I cut it actual size, when I do apply it, it actually gets down to where it needs to be. Because if I do add seam allowance, then all of a sudden the mustache is twice as large as it needs to be or was supposed to be. Um, it's a perception thing, I guess. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much that. Um, once we've got our mustache on, then then we have the we want to go in and and do some styling with it, you know, brush it out, and then start trimming it. Um, but anyway, it's just a quick way to a quick way to get a great pattern. Uh, really easy using paper towels. You can also pattern hair like that. You can pattern beards and goatees, everything, and just by pin it pin it all on there. And then, uh, and then it gives you a way to try everything out. And it also gives you an, a, the ability to pattern directly on the head in case the head is not symmetrical, your pattern still fits right. Uh, one of the biggest problems I see with patterning 
is people will be like, well, I only need to pattern half and I'll just flip it. Because you can do that in a computer. You just flip it and do your second half. 99% of the puppets that are custom and handmade are not symmetrical. The mouth plate's slightly askew, the one side of the foam compressed differently, or the fleece cover tightened on one side. So when you do your patterns, if you split them and you just decide to do half and then copy it, there's a pretty good chance it's not going to fit correctly. So it's much easier and a, more accurate to lay up a paper pattern on top of it and then pull that off and make your parts from that. So when you're going into evening it out, don't don't make it match exactly because you may be losing what you spent all that time working to get. So, Quick question before we end this section. If you do not have persona blades and you only have scissors, do you have any tips for, yes. for using scissors properly? So if you're going to cut fur with scissors, use the sharpest scissors you can find. Get some good tailor scissors, um, even the little, the little Fiskars. But just get some little short blade ones. Don't use long blades. And then what you want to do um, when you cut, take the point of your blade and you want to slide it as close to that backing as possible and then slide in underneath the nap of the fur. So when you cut, you're not cutting through the fur, you're just cutting through the base and then you still have that separation. You're never going to get it completely right, you're always going to cut through some of it, but you're not going to get the drastic lines you did cutting through with regular scissors. So yeah, the secret there is just Really get in with that point and slide it right along that base, around, along the backing, and then cut. And you can get a clean edge. Just um, the big thing with that is take your time. Just don't, don't rush it, um, and you'll get a nice clean edge on it. So um, The other thing some people do, too, is they'll cut oversized. And then once their cut's done, if they've done that, then they'll go on from the back. They'll go like on the back side. They'll come in at an angle with their scissors and they'll, they'll basically kind of press the nap down and they'll cut at an angle along that edge and trim off anything that they might have cut the first time. And that'll give you a, clean, a nice clean cut without damaging the nap too much as well. So It's a little wasteful, you're wasting some extra fur, but it gives you a clean edge and it's a good way to approach that. So. Or you should just get some Persona blades. Just get some Persona blades. 